Read my lips. No new taxes. Read my lips. No new taxes. Read my lips. No new taxes. Read my lips. We're going to cut spending. And read my lips. That is on the top five list of quotes you never want to emulate in politics. Next up, mission accomplished. Top line begins right now. Hello and welcome to ABC News Top Line. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Jonathan Carl. Every day at noon Eastern, we're right here bringing you the latest in politics. It's twitter.com slash rickkline, twitter.com slash John Carl. John, up on the hill today, what's got your eye? Well, as you said, loose lips. Look at what the, uh, the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, had to say, laying down the law on spending and also making it clear that if the Democrats are not going to agree to spending cuts, that he's fine to see the government shut down. Uh, this, Rick, I've got to say, did not sit well with a lot of Republicans up here. I'm hearing privately grumblings um, from some of Boehner's colleagues in leadership. First of all, not happy that he invoked the read my lips formulation, and also that he uh, got into this debate over a government shutdown, which is exactly where they don't want to be. That's right. This changes the storyline. Now the story becomes not will Obama cut spending, but will Republicans shut down the government. Next up today, Badger State. The anger is bubbling over in Wisconsin. There's a budget standoff. The Republican governor has actually driven Democratic state governors, state senators out of the state. Tens of thousands are marching in the streets. Schools have been closed in the state capital of Madison. And we are seeing, John, just a, a major eruption of, of anger and a big debate going on over the size and scope of government and the role of public employee unions. Yeah, it's, it's also a reminder that states, every state, has to balance its budget at the end of the year. And you're seeing some real tough choices being made in places like New York and California with Democratic governors. Tough choices that Washington for years has managed to avoid. So we'll see if some of that anger in Madison comes here as we look at some of the debates here. Next up, out of Thune. We're still waiting for a decision on John Th from John Thune about whether or not he will decide to run for president, uh, but he got a not so uh, great little boost from his fellow Republican uh, senator here, Richard Luger. Luger was asked about Thune if whether or not he had shown leadership uh, while he's been here in the Senate. In the Senate, and look at the quote: "I've not observed that." Uh, sounds almost exactly like what Dwight D. Eisenhower said way back when, when asked if he can talk about the major accomplishments of his then Vice President Richard Nixon. That's right, and this was in the context of an otherwise rather flattering profile in the Washington Post. Uh, Senator Luger looked like he was caught a bit unawares with that particular question. And finally today, distracting and annoying. Those are Sarah Palin's words, nothing more than that. Uh, she's taking on the birthers inside the party. Here's what she said on the subject yesterday. I think the birth certificate, you know, others can engage in that kind of conversation. It's distracting, it, it gets annoying, and uh, let's just stick with what really matters. That's right. Let's just stick. And we heard Karl Rove take a similar stance earlier in the week. Uh, obviously, a lot of prominent Republicans want to distance themselves as much as possible to, uh, from the so-called birther crowd. I think they would like to stop being asked about that. So maybe <laughs> this is the effort to try to do that. Uh, now we are joined up here by Congresswoman Tammy Baldwin, a congresswoman from not just Wisconsin, but from Madison, Wisconsin, yes, one indeed. of the great cities in America, and also ground zero in many ways for, for the, uh, the, the state's budget battle out there. Before we get to the specifics of what's happening in Madison, I want to ask you, we're seeing a lot of signs, a lot of talk from the protesters out there comparing this to Cairo, comparing governor, uh, the, the governor to Hos Hosni Mubarak. Can we, can we at least say that Scott Walker, whatever he may be, whatever his plans are, he is not Hosni Mubarak. This is an entirely different situation, obviously, than what happened in Cairo. Well, I think the similarities are that people are wanting to be heard. And they are taking direct action. They are coming to Madison. They're holding events all throughout the states. People want to be heard, and they feel that they're being ignored by their governor. The, I think the analogy ends there. What we're dealing with in Wisconsin is a measure that was introduced late last Friday, just a week ago. And the intent was to jam it through, uh, to ha perhaps even be done with the debate by yesterday. And everyone said, hold on. There's radical policy in this uh, budget bill. 
and we need the time to discuss it and the people need to be heard. Uh, we all know that we have to balance state budgets. Wisconsin's has to be balanced. And workers in Wisconsin want to come to the table and be a part. They're willing to sacrifice. They sacrificed in the past. They will in the future. But they want to be a part of that conversation. And the governor's budget repair bill eliminates collective bargaining rights for public employees. And, and yet the Democrats, this was, was, was quite clear uh, this morning on Good Morning America, when we, you know, the, the minority leader talking to George Stephanopoulos, the Democrats don't have a plan to balance the budget, don't have, a, don't have an alternative. I mean, don't, don't they need to do that? <laughs> well, certainly we have a brand new governor, a brand new legislature. They introduced their uh, measure last Friday. If you let the process play out, there's chances to bring lots of alternatives to the table. But this was intended to be rushed through. Uh, the state Senate uh, Democrats, I think, took prudent steps in order to slow down this debate, have uh, an opportunity for public input. You can tell that the public is so eager to be heard on this. And I hope that that's what will be accomplished through this week's activities. Congresswoman, I saw a web video that you posted uh, just yesterday talking about the work you have to do in Washington, and you said John Boehner is really trying to do what the, what the governor of Wisconsin is, is trying to do. Can you explain that a little bit? Do you think that it, there's, there are similarities at the national level, what the Republican Party is doing? Well, absolutely. The, uh, both bodies, the state legislature in Wisconsin and Congress here at the national level, are dealing with what you could describe as budget repair bills, dealing with the remainder of the current uh, fiscal year budget. And we're seeing in the House of Representatives uh, radical policies, radical uh, slashes to essential uh, service, and frankly, an attack on those workers who provide them. Uh, we're seeing that at the national level. We're seeing that at the state level. At least here at the national level, we've been given a good, adequate time to debate these issues. Um, and we continue to do so vociferously uh, throughout the day today. But I do see some similarities in terms of uh, the, the uh, you know, it, we've got to balance budgets, but we have to be smart about it. And in Wisconsin, being smart about it means involving all the voices, including that of organized labor, uh, public servants, to help come together to address our challenges. So do you think we're going to see the kind of uh, anger and frustration that we're seeing in the, the protesters uh, in Wisconsin here in Washington as, 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 as this moves forward, as this budget battle goes forward? Well, certainly the essential services that are being cut are um, going to create um, extraordinary difficulties if this is the final product. Uh, of course, we have a chance to see if uh, the Senate and negotiations between the House and Senate can arrive at more reasonable policies. Um, one of the problems, though, is that national government is less accessible to the people than yeah. state government. It's easy for people to it's easier for people to get to their state capitals to voice their opinion. All right. I'm certainly hearing from my constituents about the deep cuts that we're looking at this week, though. All right, Congresswoman Tammy Baldwin, Democrat from Wisconsin, from Madison, of course. Thank you so much for being here. I know you look forward to getting thank back you. to your district very, very shortly. I Thanks do. So much. <laughs>